Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. As I continue to work through the ABRSM Grade 6 Music Theory Workbook, my lesson now looks at Question 4, Exercise 5. And here we get to delve deeper into the music. In this particular exercise, we look at a minuet written for keyboard, we look at phrase structure, we look at key structure, we look at stylistic features, we look closer into the harmonies in particular sections, and we also look at stylistic features which give us a clue as to the era and the musical period in which the composer was writing. The full lesson can be found on my Patreon channel. If you visit patreon.com forward slash Sharon Bill, you can find the full lesson there and you can find links to this lesson in the cards and in the description box. After this short little video, you can see sample examples of this lesson showing you how I help to guide you through this question bar by bar, note by note. Everything you need to understand this advanced level music theory can be found in my Harmony and Composition textbook. This book is available from Amazon and you can find links to this book in the cards and in the description box. Enjoy your studies. The piece of music F, C, G, D, A sharps. And so the dominant will be F sharp major. So if we're in the dominant key of F sharp major, chord one and chord five, so chord one will be F sharp, A sharp, C sharp. Of course, your key signature will deal with all of that. But F sharp major has E sharps also in the key signature. So chord five will be built on the fifth note of scale, which is C sharp. E sharp will need to be a, an accidental and G sharp. Now if it's 1C, there'll be a C sharp in the bass and then 5 will also have a C sharp in the bass. So the clues that we're looking for to find this quickly and easily is we're looking for an E sharp to show us where we've changed key and then we're looking for the C sharp in the bass common to both of these chords. And in question two, you will have written this progression uh, many times, perhaps if you've addressed those exercises already. So, well, here we go. In this first section, we can see that we've got the E sharps, which is shown as we've moved to F sharp major. However, now we're looking for the one C5 with the C sharp in the bass. Notice we're in the treble clef here. So this is the C sharp. And so one C would be F sharp, A sharp, C sharp. F sharp, A sharp, C sharp, that's correct. And then chord five would be C sharp, E sharp, G sharp, which is what we've got. And so there we go. We have our one C five. So that's... Um, Point B, so here is our point B. Now we're asked to write out the right hand part of bar four as we think that should be played. So bar four, we need to write out the whole of the right hand. So we need to realize this ornament, this trill, and then we need to include the whole bar. And we also need to realise this ornament here, this appoggiatura here as well. Now then, the trill. Let's think about this. Now I'm just going to just sketch this out in rough first of all, because ordinarily this looks very much sort of like um, a classical sonata. It certainly isn't 20th century and ordinarily Previous to, um, up to and including Haydn and Mozart, we would expect a trill to begin on the upper note. So we'd expect the trill to be on the upper note. However, we already have that note here and so it's quite clumsy to repeat that note from the previous bar. 
So it would be repeating the D and then if I just sketch out how that's going to work, I don't think that's going to work at all. Sometimes, although there is kind of a general rule of thumb, not always does it work out that we sort of follow the exact procedure. We need to think musically as well as just mathematically because we have the D, or the D sharp of course, from the previous bar. And then if we repeat that D again, which is quite clumsy, so that's already voting against that. Da, da, da. So there's our trill. And then we've got to make sure that this remains unchanged. This is the given music. We can't change this at all. So we've now got to get a crotchet worth. So we need to make sure that we've got this sort of B, C. So if I sort of clumsily show this, I'm getting a bit carried away with the stems there. So they would be demi-semis, which make a quaver. And then we have these two here which make a semi-quaver. We've only got a semi-quaver's worth. So, da, 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 da. so we'd have to have like a triplet figure here. And that doesn't work at all again. So it, it's bad here because of that repeated D. And then it doesn't work because we've now got more than a step, we need to follow through in step and so that's not going to work. And so what we're gonna to have to do to make this musical rather than just kind of following the rule dogmatically is we're going to have to start on the note itself. And there are sort of, um, there is leeway to allow that. So if we go D, so C, D, C sharp, D sharp of course. So there's our first quaver beats worth. And if we have our triplet, da, 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 and then that moves by step, stretched out a bit there, never mind. So that will work. 